So we got an update on some information coming out about the Intel issue with the degradation and stability problems with chips. Um, starting out with a good thing, Asus has come out with a BIOS update. I'm going to move my head out of the way here. And so as of the 19th, there is BIOS 2202, and this is for the Z790 Hero. There's going to be, you know, different boards, but all of these Asus boards should have a BIOS update if you have a Z690, Z790. Um, if it's not there, it's coming. And so definitely check this out if you're running any of these high-end chips like the 13900K, 14900K, and even the i7s like the 14700 and 13700. Uh, 12th gen doesn't seem to really be affected um, as we know, but yeah, so going forward, that's there. Um, I did check some of the other manufacturers, just some random boards. This is just a random Z790 D4, and I'm not seeing any updates to these boards. As far as I know, there hasn't been like a huge issue with other brands. Don't get me wrong, they still exist, and people have been complaining. Gigabyte, MSI, um, ASRock has been on the lower end of side, uh, lower end of complaints as far as I know, not to um, say that they're any better than anyone else. Uh, Gigabyte here had a update not that long ago on April 12th for this is the Z790 Aorus Master. So these boards are getting some updates. I mean, obviously the Asus one, this is the biggest deal. Anyone who is buying these high-end products like the 13900K, 14900K, most of the time I see these paired with Asus boards and it's just a thing, you know, the ROG, the ROG uh, lifestyle, whatever, drinking the Kool-Aid really does get some people. I mean, it got me years ago. And I was, I was still, I still love, like, love the way it, it, they look. I have Asus screens right here in front of me. I'm not totally dissing Asus for everything that they do, but they definitely have dropped a ton in quality over the years. And um, I've made numerous videos about it. I made, you know, I, I covered the um, the original Asus issues that were happening when people were putting in the 5800X3D and they were burning up. So my, my, uh, long-term relationship with asus has been very chaotic and i no longer recommend them to people when i'm building computers um here as my like side job so anyways moving forward so here we have a post from video cards but it's actually an article written by falcon northwest a very reputable manufacturer um and this is the raptor lake stability guide so as you can tell this is going back quite a bit and these are all the things that they had pretty much found when they were building their systems that they would enable to create a stable computer. Now, this here, the BIOS, um, I am not sure if the newest BIOS that's coming out, the one that just came out recently, if this is going to fix all of this, I would love to actually have one of you guys comment down below. If you do update the BIOS, let me know, because um, I do not have currently an Asus motherboard that I can try this on. Um, Anyone else like E-Rock or somebody who sees this, if you watch it, I would love to know uh, what you guys end up uh, finding. So anyway, going back to this, this is kind of ridiculous. This goes into what I was saying in my last video. Nobody should have to do this. This is just absurd, to be honest. And it's not like somebody couldn't figure it out. There's not that many settings here. But again, you really should not be having to play with new hardware that you just put together that much to get a stable system. And just to show you guys how much Asus was actually pushing those chips right out of the gate with the stock BIOS. Here we have the stock BIOS, which was 12.6% faster than the baseline. So this is the baseline over here, 35,851 versus the Asus board, which was hitting 40,998. That's a pretty huge increase. Um, this is Cinebench. These are like synthetics. It's not in-game. You're not going to see like huge in-game percentage gains in a, in a video game. But in a workload situation, these numbers could be pretty big. So there's a few things to think of here too, by the way. When Asus and Intel are working together and they come out with a brand new product, Asus can put a BIOS like this on, on their board and they will show these insane numbers, which of course builds hype, gets people very interested. And as time goes on, now these chips are degrading and getting worse and worse and worse. So keep in mind, 
if you were to have a score like this in the beginning and then you were going to set your chip down to a baseline i can almost guarantee it's not going to hit this baseline score anymore it's probably going to be lower it's probably even 33 32 if your chip was being hit real hard with the voltage the entire time um i can't prove that i'm just saying um, and as we've seen, and people like you guys have commented down below, you guys have seen this happen to your own personal stuff. My last video, there was a bunch of comments about it. Um, it was actually pretty mind blowing to see how many people were having issues. Um, and that sucks. I feel bad for anyone that's going through an issue. You spent a lot of money, you should get a good product. <laughs> and it looks like Buildzoid seems to also agree. Um, I actually think that he's very smart by saying this here, the Intel baseline profile option should be the first option. Like when you boot up your BIOS, boot up your motherboard for the first time and you're entering in, you installed a new chip, um, that should be the BIOS that loads and comes with all the new boards. You should have the option to be able to tweak it, maybe use like uh, Asus's AI, which always way overdoes everything, or maybe they need a dual BIOS option just in case like some of the gigabyte boards have. I'm not done talking about the Intel situation, but I did want to mention this now that we're on the topic of motherboards. Um, I am not a MSI fan or anything by any means, but they are the last company that allows you to RMA products, and hopefully this does not change, knocking on wood, uh, they allow you to RMA products without actually having to register them. And I went in to register this. This is a B550 that has problems. And, um, you know, I was just thinking it's been sitting here for a while. And I was like, man, I would love to use this for a project or have like a nice AM4 test bench. And sure enough, uh, I went instead of going to product registration, I just went to online RMA, sent in a request and they approved it. And um, so I guess anything that's just within the return window, if you guys are looking to buy used parts, MSI is actually a really good option. And I normally wouldn't say that. I hate the Dragon. I overall don't really like the designs that they have too much. Um, I would much prefer like Gigabyte or ASRock, but not bad. So pretty cool option. Just wanted to throw that out there. Um, also the GPUs and other products. So if you guys have anything or like say you come across a 3080 Ti or something on the used market and something happens to it, you can still RMA that card um, unless, you know, it's like significant damage or something. So going back to the Intel topic at hand, this seems like it's a pretty big problem. And I'm seeing this blame game between the companies like the motherboard manufacturers and Intel, but ultimately this is Intel's fault. And sure, yes, Asus will take some blame and they are ruining chips by, you know, putting too much voltage in. But just remember that Intel had to approve this. They don't just, you know, all willy nilly send out random motherboards with random uh, voltages and configurations. These are things that Intel themselves has approved, which means that, you know, they want to look good. They know Asus is the kind of flashy drink the Kool-Aid company. Everyone really loves the ROG brand for the most part. And um, so they they use that to kind of build hype around the product, uh, show off those huge numbers. And then I don't even know if Intel themselves knew like that in a couple of months, people were having their chips burn up and go bad. And the, the thing is here that like Intel is definitely, they're definitely gonna have to be responsible for this. There's gonna be some blowback because it's hard to tell like how long, it's like even running a 13700K. I ran my 13700K in an ASUS board for, I don't know, almost a year. Did Is my chip significantly worse than when I first got it? I don't know. That's actually my fault. I should have benchmarked it heavily in the beginning, and I didn't. I was just too focused on content, gaming, and using the computer the way it's meant to be used, not benchmarking it every couple of months to make sure, hey, is my chip losing its performance over time? This was never a problem for Intel. and. You know, it saddens me because I came back to Intel from leaving from Ryzen and, and Ryzen was so good to me. I had nothing but an amazing experience on AMD and I really, I, I'm not even an AMD fanboy. I really am not. I was pure Intel all the way dating back to the X58 series. I've had every X class of board until finally the uh, Z790 and uh, 13700K. I switched back in my own personal setup to Asus on a regular consumer platform, not the HEDT old school platform, which is no longer. And after all the problems I had 
in the past on like AMD old hardware, you know, I just, I didn't really care for AMD. 3950X came out and I was like, damn, that's a sick CPU. Went with it, super happy. Going back to this, nothing but problems. Um, it's just been kind of a nightmare, this Intel CPU. And it's like, I don't want to hate it. I like the company. I know that they're kind of the underdog right now. And I, I hope that they do well. Competition is the most important thing in this industry. So anyways, that's going to do it for this video, guys. Uh, go check for your BIOS. Make sure you update your BIOS. And um, if you're having any problems, reach out to Intel and RMA your CPU because this is crazy. There's a few comments down there that were like, hey, you know, one of you guys wrote that you were typing this as your computer was crashing and you were saving it and then retyping it. I'll post the comment um, like, damn, thank you. But also like, man, RMA that CPU. Anyways, guys, uh, drop a like on the video, subscribe if you want to sub, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.